Hello Internet, welcome back to the Party Meeple channel. Um, as regular viewers will know, I like designing games and I've had about three that I'm interested, excited about, working on, forgetting about, working on again over the last 12 months. And one of them is 60 Second Cocktail. It's been traveling around with me in a plastic bag so I can badger my friends to play test it and get it working because as anyone who's designed a game knows, the game you design isn't the game you finish with. So I decided rather than the plastic bag, I'd make a box to carry it around in. And the box I made is made out of this straw board, I think they call it. It's like two millimeter cardboard that's very fibrous. And you need to you need to like basically get a screwdriver to open it because I didn't quite get the dimensions right. And you can see this is this has been in my bag as well, and it's you know quite scuffed on the edges. Anyway, I thought it might be nice to actually make like a proper nice little game box for 60 second cocktail to go in because I'd like to show it off to a few people. Um, and you know you want it to look better than this. So stick with me while I talk about, and you may think this was really straightforward, and it turned out not quite to be, but stick with me and I'll show you how I made my little game boxes. So first of all, I made a couple of templates, which I uh, measured up and printed out in GIMP and put like some tacky uh, spray adhesive on the back so that when I put them down on whatever I was wanting to cut out, they would stay put. Um, the white card you see here on the sheet, the large sheet, is just from our craft shop and um, I'll put the thickness of that up, but I imagine it's about a millimetre and it's sort of shiny on both sides. It's actually a nice looking card, better than the ugly straw board. Anyway, I use my template to mark out the uh, shape of the box. Obviously there's two templates, a top and a bottom, and you can see that it peels away quite well if you let this tackiness sort of dry a bit before you use it. I rounded the end of a ruler off, not the measuring end, the round end that you hang it up with, um, and used that to score the card because that gives me like a guide on um, where I'm going to uh, cut and fold. So obviously you need to do four little cuts in on the one edge like this. So they're the tabs that will fold around and then you just ease them out you know, by about five degrees so there's like a little bit of clearance when you fold them in and they don't like crowd the bottom of the box and then you can just fold those suckers up basically I also worked out if you pin put put the uh, a pinhole through the card so you could see the other side um, that you and folded them the other way so the score mark is on the back rather than on the inside or the on the yeah on the, the score mark is on the outside then the fold actually worked a lot better. I did a few of these boxes. You can see there's a couple in the top. Then just some PVA glue on the tabs, fold it all up and use a clothes peg to hold it. And like 40 minutes later, you've got what looks like a pretty reasonable box. Um, and better than the big, thick, nasty card boxes I made before. But obviously we want them to look nice. So I went and printed out the box cover and I used GIMP again to um, do the artwork for this. Um, if you're interested in how that works, go and have a look at uh, the video about making 18xx money tokens and I explain how to use GIMP to do all this sort of stuff. Uh, just like basic art. It's, it's, it's a free piece of artistic software that looks a little bit like... Um, uh, like Photoshop in some respects, uh, but I, I find it easier to use. Um, anyway, here am I sticking the thing down and just making a complete balls up of it and deciding like we're going to start that again. So here we go again. First of all, do these uh, shortcuts here where the corners of the box will be and I'm using the ruler so I know where to start from. Then um, I used my rotary cutter to go around the outside. And one of the things about cutting out these sticker sheets, same as the ones that I used in the 18xx tokens and the trains on a train tokens and everything, um, is they're really hard to peel if you cut them out. So you can see me fumbling around here. I put a little score mark in the back 
and here we go come on come on you know you can do this and there it is unfortunately i accidentally overscored it and took a little piece off but eventually eventually we got it to move now you have to sort of pull this off really gently i mean i've sped this up or we'd be here all day um using my little scriber to hold it down while i do it and then basically line the lid of the box up very carefully on the top push it all down nicely and then fold the long sides in here we go and then use a pair of scissors to trim the corners off and in fact i've gone off to find the scissors can't find the scissors come back oh yes i left them under the scraps anyway here we go we just taking a little notch out of each of the four corners um, and you'll see why as so we can bend the tab around take a notch out of the other corner there bend the top over and obviously you won't be able to bend the top over if you don't take that little notch out with the scissors so now we'll do the other side feel like I've been here before and round it goes pushing it down fold the top over and in and obviously this helps also helps hold the box together and then I found that the little my little scriber if I use the back of it <laughs> um, to push the sticker down it actually made the sticker stick like a quite a bit better and we're back to normal speed now and there's our box and seriously I was really quite happy with how this turned out uh, you can see I've had a couple of other goes up the top there one is the shitty old box one is a second box that I left a scar on by accidentally getting the sticker stuck to the sticker but um, here's another box and these are going to get given to people who watch well with a game in it for people who watch the channel what do you think so if I'm going to give a game away I should explain how the game actually works each player has a deck of four cards. There will be a spirit, some ice, a condiment, and water. This is a term my parents used to use for tonic, soda water, dry ginger ale, all the things you might put into a mixed drink. To set up the game, each player takes their four cards and two dollars, and the rest of the money goes in the center of the table as a tip jar. These are, you know, imagine the jar on the bar where if you do a good job as a bar person, you're going to get a dollar. Everyone puts a card face down and you can select which card you'd like to put face down in front of them. And once there are four cards face down, when it comes around to your turn again, you can either choose to put another card face down and you can select that, or you can say, I can flip three cards up without breaking 60 seconds. And if you look, notice on the top of the cards here, they all have a time. You have 60 seconds to make this cocktail. If you flipped up three cards without breaking 60 seconds, then you would make a cocktail and you would get a coin from the tip jar. However, after you say, I can flip three cards up, around the table, everybody else gets a chance to say, well, no, I can flip four. Or if there were five cards up, five cards. The deal is, you need to flip all of your own cards up first. All of them. Uh, and then you need to flip cards top to bottom on everyone else's stack, up to the number that you've bid. If you manage to flip up two with ice on it, I have no idea why ice makes cocktails better, but evidently it does, you will get an extra dollar from the bank. If you bust, the boss will ask you to pay for the cocktail you've just mixed and you will lose a dollar out of the game. If you have no more money, you're sent home. So there's a player elimination in this game, which generally is agreed is not the best, but it's a pretty short game. So you're not going to be sitting out for very long and you get to watch other people sweat over their moves. So that's how the game plays. People either play a card face down or make a bid that they can flip so many cards up and everyone else gets a chance to up that bid or pass, then the person who's made the bid flips all of their own cards, all of their own cards first, and then chooses other players' cards to flip without going over 60 seconds. If they do, they get paid. If they flip two ice, they get paid twice. And if they bust, the boss asks them to pay and that money leaves the game. The game is played until the tip jar is empty or there is only one person left working at the bar. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned something about making boxes. I'll give away uh, to the two extra copies of um, 60 Second Cocktail that I made today uh, in their boxes to anywhere in the world. Leave a comment either on my Twitter account or below on the YouTube if you'd like to be in it. And in about a week or a day or yeah, probably a week, I will uh, draw a name randomly from there and post uh, you a copy of 60 Second Cocktail. It's almost certainly going to go into production as the next Party Meeple uh, game. So you will have a Made By These Hands copy of the game complete with slightly incorrect artwork and possibly a very crappy box. What's not liked? What's not to like about that? Anyway, if you found this video interesting, please like and subscribe and share, and I'll see you for the next Party Meeple video.